matched it up from the next day. The display showed drunk and Hicks hit the answer key. Tell me we got home. Rocky said, it's better than that. Get me stumped by that cop. his heart rate slowed down. He began to drift towards sleep. Then he sat up. He was wide awake again. He grabbed his phone and hit the key to call Brockman back. Hicks said the Riverside Lodge, where Reacher and the woman made a reservation but didn't show. walked through the main entrance of the Riverside Lodge, just outside Benson. First was the clerk who had helped Reacher the previous evening. His feet were bare. He was wearing blue and white striped pajamas, and his blonde hair was sticking out in all kinds of crazy directions. He was followed by the two Minerva guys who had been sent to Colorado. Next came the two guys who had been keeping watch at the Greyhound station in Jackson. The guy who brought up the rear looked like he was as broad as any two of the others. He was six foot six tall, a good 300 pounds. His chest and biceps were so big that his arms couldn't hang straight down at his sides. He had no neck. His head was shaved. His eyes were small, mean dots that sank beneath the sharp cliff of his forehead. He had a tattoo on his right forearm that once said, Harold and Molly forever in a heart pierced by an arrow. A cut price attempt at laser removal had left it reading something more like Laryl oily leave in an apple. Harold barged to the front of the group and shoved the kid in the pajamas toward the mahogany counter. The kid scuttled around behind it and took a card key from his war. He prodded some buttons on the programming machine, dipped the card in the slot, and held it out. His hand was shaking. He said, 112. Harold snatched the card, and the kid programmed another. He said, 114. 
Harold took it, too, and stared at the cards for a moment. Then he punched the kid in the face. The kid's body hit the floor and slid until his head was pressed against the side wall. Harold and the other four guys didn't give him a second glance. They started moving immediately, crossed the deserted reception area, and made their way down the north corridor. One of them continued to room 114, Anna's room. The others lined up behind Harold outside 112, Reacher's room. came out of the bathroom and said, it's empty, Breacher's gone. Maybe he was never here. Room 114 is a mirror image of 112. The furnishings were completely gone. It's fast and easy to get around. One difference was the quality of his hair. Instead of smelling moldy and stale, it felt fresh but a little thin. The drapes were pulled aside and the window was open. The Minerva guy.
scrambling across the floor. The guys in room 112 heard the noises. Harold said, 